Well, I'll tell you what, this is very non-obvious how to do the license uh, file. I can right click here, I can go to licensing over here, like you can request a license here, but I've already got the license file. And then we can do this, and then I can select license down here, and I can do like node locked, which is locked to the computer or transportable or floating or whatever. And then if I try to install it like this, and then, it gives me to this and add new license. That doesn't work because that checks the online server. What if I have a license file to install? That brings me to the help over here. And then I finally figure out that you've got to hit this little uh, wrench icon up here. So you have to go up to there and then install license file. And there you go. I have it. Expiration uh, June 24. So it looks like I've only got a year on my license, so <laughs> it's going to expire. They didn't give me a perpetual one. Um, all right, so it looks like I'm in. It's good to go. Click here to request license. It's unlicensed. What? Oh, no, nah, licensing status. No, it's, it's not showing up here. R refresh, refresh. No, nah, there we go. Okay, I had to refresh it before it actually worked. Now it still says unlicensed. Come on, come on, it's taking the piss now. Seriously, like, what What do I have to do? Do I have to, like, do I double click on it? Like, it's green ticked? I, I, I'm, <laughs> come on, seriously. Like, I've got my machine connected, everything, everything's, everything's hunky-dory, right? R refresh license, close, and yet it still says I'm unlicensed. How to activate a bench view license and install that <laughs> come on I'm done start here add I've already added advanced battery test emulation launching please connect to an instrument okay available instruments where is it search and connect to instrument <laughs> it showed up before in the license thing that it was connected. So what the heck? Oh, now it's va well, no, it's vanished from here. It's gone up to here. Okay, that's good. Like there it is, right? It's it's got the IP and everything, right? I am connected. Why are there no available instruments here? Instrument control, no no connection to instrument A to connect it. <laughs> Start. Instrument is not connected. It's connected. Start all. Instrument is not connected. Wow. It still says unlicensed. Click here to re uh, to do license. Look, to request a license. And there, there it is. Right? I've got my license. That should work now. But it, and, well, I assume that maybe the license is working now because I was not able to get into this screen before, by the way. It would just, like, spin its wheel. So I thought that was... Um, from the lack of license, but nope. Um, uh, what, what am I doing wrong? Please connect the instrument. It, it's connected. It's it's connected over here. <laughs> Refresh. I mean, it's gone to the IP, right? Control instrument. So that that is obviously connected, right? Because that, that page wouldn't show up. That page is being rendered. Yeah, I, I was able to get to this before and it was asking for a password and I couldn't get it, but now it's not even doing anything. Uh, right, I, I'm just going to shut it down. I'll try again. The interesting thing is about when you start it up, it adds an icon to your Windows desktop um, that you can choose like the specific uh, app that you're using. In this case, the uh, Benchview Advanced Battery Tester which is what I've got a license for, right? So we don't want to show that on startup anymore, okay? Um, and look, right? It's, it's here, right? Hey, I've got my license now. Yeah, I had to restart the thing. Jeez, that's terrible, Muriel. Okay, so here we go. No, it's now, oh, no, I have another, ver there's another version open. Oh, was that why? Hang on. Are you sure to want to edge at this bench application? Yes. Okay, there was, for some reason, there was another version running. Maybe that's it. No, it, it opens up. 
Yep. Okay. No, please connect to instrument. No, there it is. Once again, there's the IP address, right? And I can't, I, I cannot <laughs> get this working. <laughs> please connect to an instrument. <laughs> I can't, the instrument is there, I swear. There we go, right? I'm in, right? It is connected. It's got serial number, everything. This page is rendered from the instrument I'm talking to, right? There's the IP address, right? It's rendered. So enable front panel identification indicator. Um, but it's there, right? So it's, it's, it's connected, right? And if I go control instrument, it asks for a password. I got no idea what the password is. I've tried four zeros. I've tried one, two, three, four. I got no idea um, <laughs> what the password is to get into there. Maybe I can set it up on the instrument. Maybe I need to set it up on the instrument then. Um, but right, but you saw that it's actually connected, right? It's physically there, and then it uh, and then it vanishes from this list here. Serial control COM port. Um, instrument, you know, uh, is yet to be installed. I can install it. I'm going to install the serial app. Why not? Serial control beta. Do I need a license for that too? <laughs> and, okay, surprise, send and receive cable. Oh, that's only if you want to connect it via serial, I guess, which doesn't really matter. But anyway, here we go. Please connect to an instrument. How am I not connected? Available instruments, nothing. When you saw, remember recent new manual configure, disconnect highlighted. Okay, so maybe I can manually configure it. Okay, that's GPIB, no. Okay, so I'd have to put in the, no, no, that's not gonna do the business because it's via the ethernet. So unless I can put in the IP address, 192.168.0109, so I'll paste that in and, uh, Okay, in invalid address. Okay, so it doesn't like that at all. Yet it works with the web interface, uh, but that might not be, it may not recognize IPs there. But I, how does this not work? Here we go. There is the TCP IP address for it. Can we manually put that in? Oh, no, that it, it didn't copy that. The resource descriptor. This is really starting to suck. Invalid address. I'm pretty sure I typed that incorrectly. Nah, it just it just doesn't like that at all. Maybe if I leave out socket off the end. No, no, come on. This is just <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, hello. All of a sudden it worked. Wow, what the heck? There you go. Well, that was a struggle. Um, all this Benchview software, it's very impressive, right? Like I can go home, can I go home? And we can like, I can show you like all the different things and we can go into applications, application list and look at all the different applications, right? It's very impressive, right? I can see why they've done this, right? One app to rule them all, right? And it connects to every single one of their instruments, like the, the one we're using here now, okay, which is the um, BenQ Advanced Battery Test and Emulation. It works with these five instruments, right? So it works, you know, these are like the higher end models and stuff like that. They've got really, this is not a high end model <laughs> that we're dealing with here. Um, it's, uh, well, you know, it's pretty good, but they've got way higher end as well, you know, power profilers and all that sort of jazz. And um, yeah, so no, here's all the supported models, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the runt of the litter that I've got now. This is their brand spanking new one, um, lower cost unit. They've got all these like real high end ones, but if you have to ask the price for those, you probably can't afford it. Um, and right, there we go, 365 days left. Okay, right, so it's it's very impressive. I can see why they've done this bench view thing. It, it really is quite nice, but am I gonna go through this drama again? One of the instances uh, is already running. Okay, oh, there you go. No, it's good. I'm back in. Okay, so now I can emulate. Right. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> but what a drama, huh? Wow. I can't believe, I have no idea why that IP address didn't work to start off with, and then it did in the end. 
I got and just trying to find a license file and they sent me a .eml file, which is a, um, I think that's an Outlook like mail file. And it <laughs> didn't like, I don't know, because I don't use Outlook, right? I use Gmail for everything. And it Gmail wouldn't open it. It was an error. And uh, then so I installed Outlook. Uh, without having to go through all the rigmarole, but I installed it and then opened it and then the license file was embedded in there and I was actually able to download the license file. So I eventually got it, but um, yeah, <laughs> it just needs to be a needs to be a better way. So we can shut that down and we can get that. Can we, yeah, we can move that over there to expand the screen, right? This looks really good. Can we change, I don't know. Look, I'm not going to play around with this now. How do we change the axis? Can we change the axis? Auto scale, auto scale, or manual. Does that manual scale, or is that just auto scale each time? I want to be able to manually change it, of course. I'd be stunned if that's not possible. I'd be absolutely stunned. So, yeah, I, I really, I like in the docking, like, is docking the correct word where, you know, you can expand it out? Um, like, you know, like you can hide the settings, but then you can expand out that one, and then you can expand out that one. Like, that's really polished stuff. I really like that. Like, they've put a lot of effort into this. Um, <laughs> and it's so overly complicated that, yeah, it, it's a pain in the ass to get set up. Or, or I was doing something dumb. I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below. But anyway, this is Keysight Benchview. I've used, like, a really older, much, much older version of this, like Donkey's years ago, I think. But, um, yeah, this is their new thing that supports every single product for every single application. Then they've got apps which run inside this, and they're probably all licensed, you know, or a good lot of them are. Um, I don't know how much license is for this thing. I got no idea, but they sent it to me because um, obviously I got to use it to do reviews and and videos with. So come on, there's got to be a way to use user preferences. No, it's got to be a way to manually adjust that. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, stay tuned. I'll be doing videos on, uh, oh, and we can do tab layouts and all that, and different docking layouts and things. Anyway, very cool, and you can have multiple instruments, and you can script the thing, like there's this test flow thing, right? And I don't know how that works. Flow, I don't know, you've got to put stuff in. How do you, how do you, oh, there you go, basic blocks, right? There you go, nice, right? So we can drag in a delay, a wait until, I, uh, seriously? <laughs> Eight-year-old Huxley would love this, right? Because this is like the, um, this is like the scratch stuff that they do, right? And yeah, so like an, like an eight-year-old can, or less, can actually program this. He's, he's been doing programming courses with um, looped op optimizations and all sorts of stuff, um, and, and he's only eight, and he'd, he would love this, right? And prompt, so we can get a prompt from the user, right? Or we can prompt ask user for something. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That's great. It's better than writing code, right? This is what you want. Um, so, yeah. And, and then, then you've got loops and variables. You've got math stuff and basic. Got to have more advanced than that. Um, yeah, there you go. X and exponent logarithm. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's, that's super impressive, right? And constants, trigonometry time, unit conversions. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I'm thoroughly impressed. Now, once I got over the... <laughs> I haven't actually used it in anger yet, but I'm thoroughly impressed at uh, the effort they've put into this. Wow, this looks really polished, apart from the licensing system. <laughs> and the connection. I don't know what the connection problems were, but anyway, that looks very, very cool. So we can run these uh, test flow things on, like, I don't know how you set, like, we can do all this sort of stuff, but to delay, wait, but then how do we, like, how do we get, like, read voltage, for example? Like, if, if voltage is less than, you know, 3.6 volts or something, you know, shut off load or something like that. So how do you do that? I'm not sure. Still required to look into, but there you go. There's Benchview and my licensing issues. I just thought I'd shoot this video to, because <laughs> I was struggling. I was struggling to figure out how to install the license and it wasn't working. So I press record. Anyway, thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.